Hey everybody and welcome back. This week I'm going to be talking about away rotations or as some people refer to them sub internships or acting internships for medical students. Uh, over time uh, I think they've become more and more common and in certain specialties um, it's become almost a requirement for uh, applying to residency and being a competitive applicant. So I'll first start about applying to, to these away rotations. I think what a lot of people do that I think may hurt them is over applying. So they'll just do the shotgun approach, apply to a bunch of different programs, and then pick and choose after they get their acceptances. I think that that process can hurt you a little bit. Uh, I suggest applying to a few that you really want to go to and then um, that way you don't get put in a situation where you get a bunch of different acceptances and programs know that you got the acceptance and then you end up saying no I don't want to go there. Um, it kind of makes it obvious that the reason being that you got an away rotation in a program you like more and that's kind of a bad look so uh, not that you should only apply to one or two but I would limit um, the number of programs you apply to. Uh, a lot of people ask me, how many away rotations should I do? I think that the sweet spot is kind of that two to three um, away rotation number. Any more than three, I think is kind of unnecessary and you're really stretching yourself thin. Um, two is probably that good medium number where you've done enough, um, to get what you need and you're not overdoing it. So another thing to consider is which programs are you going to apply to? So the approach that I took is do one rotation at a place that may be a long shot that you would like to go to but would give you a great letter of recommendation uh, from spending a month there and impressing the faculty. And the second place that I did an away rotation at was somewhere that I really wanted to go. I wanted to make a good impression. I thought I had a really good shot of getting in and I wanted to sort of, in a way, guarantee myself an interview and do my best to stand out. Timing is also a big deal. You want to make sure that you've completed your away rotations before the time comes to submit your application that way, if you are getting letters of recommendation from those programs, they're complete and ready in time for when you're going to submit your application. Another thing people need to recognize is, yeah, of course, these away rotations can be helpful. Uh, if you don't have necessarily the best application, this is your way to spend a month proving that you're going to be a better resident than what people may be seeing on paper and really expressing the type of person you are and the personality you have. On the flip side, um, and to be straightforward, a lot of people are better on paper. And that makes an away rotation um, a little complicated because uh, maybe you spend a month there and then they realize that, oh, the person on paper is a lot better than what I've been seeing over the last month. or Maybe your personality doesn't mesh with their program or uh, different things like that. Okay, so the question that everyone has is, how are you going to be successful in an away rotation? I think that it's a very difficult balance. Um, you want to show up early, work hard, show that you're interested. At the same time, you don't want to be overly aggressive or annoying, asking questions just for the sake of asking questions to be heard, um, asking questions in the operating room at the wrong times. So I think the people that end up being really successful are the ones that have that social awareness and are able to pick up hints and cues and know when the right time to ask questions is um, how aggressive to be in regards to being helpful, quote-unquote. 
Um, an example would be in the operating room, you know, you want to help get the patient on the bed and position and everything, but at the same time, you don't want to be standing in the way or, uh, you know, being a hindrance potentially to the operation. And like I said, it's a fine balance and those are things you really want to consider. Um, another thing I want to mention is the, this whole process is not just them interviewing you, but it's also your chance to sort of interview the program and find out, is this a place that you'd even want to be at? And away rotations are the best way to figure that out. You know, spend time with the residents, try to get a feel of the vibe for the program, see how the residents and the faculty interact, look into the autonomy that residents get when they're operating, you know, get an idea of their schedule, their hours, how they are on call and different things like that. Because these important insights, you can only really get through an away rotation. You can't get these by that, you know, few hours that you spend interviewing uh, at a program or via a Zoom call or something like that. So I'm going to go ahead and give kind of a brief summary of the different things you can do uh, to be successful on uh, your away rotation. So first thing, show up early, pre-round on your patients, be ready to present the patients you pre-round on, know their HPI, why they're there, the procedures they've had, and try to formulate a plan for next steps for the patient. Um, next thing is, you know, ask how you can be helpful. Ask for feedback. Um, that way you have an idea you know, maybe there's something you can do differently instead of continuously doing the same thing that may be wrong or may be annoying without anyone telling you. Um, I think it's important to show interest um, and without being overly, you know, aggressive. Ask thoughtful questions uh, at the right time. So, don't just have a giant list of questions that you're constantly asking throughout the day. You know, wait for good moments to ask the right questions that clearly show you've done your reading and you have an idea about what's going on. Um, and this is kind of specific to surgical specialties. If you are going to be involved in a case, make sure you read up on that case, know the steps of the case, um, learn the anatomy, and ultimately you kind of want to anticipate the types of questions they might ask you, uh, that way you're prepared, and then you can look good answering those questions. All right, well, I'm sure there's a lot more that I could discuss, but for the sake of time, we'll kind of just wrap it up there. If you guys have any other questions or comments, suggestions, or feedback, uh, please leave them in the comments section. If you guys enjoyed the content or know somebody else that might, um, please share it with them. Please like and subscribe and uh, leave me some suggestions for new videos. Looking forward to the next video and we'll see you guys then.